when this bit of news went out today, it literally was everywhere on almost every black sector portion of YouTube that I'm subscribed to. I don't think I I think I must have seen it pop up at least almost 10 times from various people I'm subscribed to or just various places on social media. If y'all don't know by now and you had to, and I don't know how and you have to been have to been living under a rock. Minister Louis Farrakhan had has been banned on Facebook and most likely on Instagram too because if you don't know Facebook owns Instagram. So if he's banned on Facebook, he's most likely banned on Instagram as well, which means he and the Nation of Islam cannot communicate anymore on those particular platforms. Now, I don't know if Twitter is going to follow suit or whatever, but if they did, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, they had put out a list of names of people that were banned on various social media platforms, well, Facebook in particular. Alex Jones, Tinker Bitch, a.k.a. Milo Yiannopoulos. You know, I don't like that guy. And Minister Louis Farrakhan were three of those names. But most people were focused more on Louis Farrakhan and for good reason. We know that they have a deep rooted, deep seated hatred for this man and have for decades. Now they do not like this man with a passion. They are probably counting down the days until he is in the ground. I made a post on Twitter and said that, yeah, you can kick him off of your platform, but his message is it goes be light years beyond a social media platform because he's been around before social media was even a thing and he was influencing people back then. So imagine what he was able to do with social media. And that's probably what they're scared of. I was listening to a live stream that Cerulean Gray had. And, he, and someone mentioned about Louis Farrakhan. He says, getting to the point where in America, they don't want certain voices getting out there and pushing a, a certain narrative or a certain message because of the state that the establishment is in right now. They're literally in overdrive trying to, uh, I guess you could say, cover for something. But it, it's almost like nothing in America in, in this point in time is really sacred anymore. Everybody knows everything or just about now, it's interesting because every time something happens dealing with the Jewish community, they find a way to slip Minister Farrakhan in there some way, somehow, even if he has nothing to do with it whatsoever. That's just like now, whenever the topic of rape comes up, they'll find a way to slip Bill Cosby in, even though they convicted him on hearsay. But they'll never say anything about Harvey Weinstein or Stephen Collins or Roman Polanski or any of those guys. Now, we just had a synagogue in California, in San Diego, just be shot up a few days ago. And they do not come at that person the way that they came at Minister Farrakhan, but I'm very sure they found a way to slip him in the conversation. I believe it was Alyssa Milano a few months ago who said something about Minister Farrakhan and the whole anti-Semitic thing. And he had nothing to do with that. You just had also the one in Pittsburgh do the same thing. And they still found a way to slip him in there. They're using him as a proxy. But this is a way that they want to censor and get black voices off of social media. They just use Alex Jones, I guess you can say, as a sacrificial lamb. Sort of like what they did with Harvey Weinstein when the whole Me Too thing kicked off. But like I said, Minister Farrakhan, his voice, his message goes way beyond social media's reach. And I think that's another thing that they hate. That's why I said they're probably counting down the days until he's gone. But what makes them think that he's not going to have someone that's going to succeed him? Maybe not have as much influence as he did, but definitely he has some i'm sure he has some people lined up and they hate that he has an army around him they hate that too because that means they can't get to him they just gotta wait until he croaks and then that'll be that they probably gonna have parades and dancing in the street when that happens 
just to show their true wicked nature. And take it from somebody who has had to deal with the complications of being on YouTube and had to have multiple channels snatched away from me, whether mostly because of these trolls. Now, y'all remember what happened a couple months ago when I ended up on that 4chan website and the guy practically admitted that he was the one that was responsible for getting my previous channel removed. And he was trying to remove this one. But as you can see, that never happened. Because I think they caught on to people doing the whole false flagging thing. Because back then, their algorithm couldn't pick it up. So it was real easy for people to false flag stuff and get your channel removed that they didn't agree with what you were saying. I'm like, if you don't like what I'm saying, then just go to another channel that caters to um, your liking. No one is forcing you to stay here. No one's forcing you to listen to what I have to say. And another thing they hate about Minister Farrakhan is they hate that he has a powerful voice and he can reach people of pretty much any and everywhere. Like he reaches people who are older. He reaches people who are like middle age. He he reaches younger people, probably in their thirties and twenties. And he reaches the youth who are like teenagers and probably younger than that. And they can't have that. Why do you think they killed Fred Hampton? Because he was reaching people on a global scale and they couldn't have that. It's something about that that black voice, especially that black male voice that pounds with authority and such diction that they hate. They see as a threat. Everything they see about us is a threat, but they really hate when we're when when we're about our business and when we operate on a way on in a scale that is not the one that's normal to them. They want us to be just that raging, walking, talking stereotype every single time. And when we don't deliver on that, they go into panic mode and they pull stuff like this as if him being banned from Facebook is really going to change anything. Because I'm sure there's probably other outlets that he can use where he can still get his message out there. They better be lucky black people to own the media because, um, oh, the endless possibilities of what will be put out there. They would probably be scared shitless. They would run right back to them caves. But this this isn't going to stop him. This isn't going to slow him down. It's probably going he probably going to come up with something to make, you know, expound on this. And turn it into something that can work in his favor. Usually a lot of times it does. Look at LeBron James. When that Laura Ingram chick had the nerve to say shut up and dribble. He turned it into some kind of uh, product. And ended up profiting off of what she said. And I'm, she said it. And she don't get a dime from it. Which I say is good for her. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. And I will talk to you in the next one.